Happy New Year and Happy New Law, I guess. Are we? I don't think we're celebrating this one, but it's really not that big of a deal. I, I swear to you, yes, there is a new law that applies to you if you own your own business, but I t- I'm telling you, it's really not that big of a deal, and I'm going to walk you through what it is, what you have to do about it really quickly, and I have a free resource for you, a new free boy guide, a BOI guide, down for you l- below in the show notes, but... First things first, welcome back to On Your Terms in the New Year. Brand new year, new us, new everything, right? I don't know. Hopefully by the time you're listening to this, my new branding is out. If not, it's happening any second, Um, but you're going to see like a lot of freshness around the podcast, which I'm really, really excited for. So like new podcast cover, we have a new description, an updated trailer, all the, the branding and all that kind of stuff is changing for the podcast and a lot of that's because all of my you know business branding and website and all that is changing as well it just that part takes a lot longer so that's that's all been in the works for like pretty much the last year so i'm really really excited for the the freshness that branding brings in the new year and i also wanted to chat with you really quickly before we get into today's episode and this new this new boy reporting requirement and all that good stuff. Because I know that for some people, like the new year is not exactly the whole new year, new you, fun, fresh start feeling. I feel like since my parents died too, like I, I don't, I don't love the new year. I don't love any like big changes. So I haven't loved like seasonal transitions. I haven't loved even like new months to be honest, but any kind of like changes or anything that signals that we're like moving on, going to the next phase, um, new year. Like my dad died um, about a year and a half ago. And so I remember like this time last year when we were going into 2023, it was the first time it was going to be a new year without him. And I really didn't like that. Now this is going to be the first year without my mom and the first year without both of them. So I just, I just don't like it. I'm going to be honest with you. I I just have a hard time. So I I like give a lot of credit to all my friends out there who are struggling with grief stuff around the holiday season and around the new year. But also for any of you who maybe you haven't lost somebody recently, but you're just not feeling that like new year feeling, or there's something about the new year that makes you a little sad. I think that's really normal too. I know a lot of my friends will say, you know, I feel like I'm the only one, but the new year makes me a little sad. And I'm like, you know, it's funny. A lot of people say that. And so you're definitely not alone. I think we're just, we don't hear people talk about it as often. So I'm honoring that the new year doesn't always feel fun and exciting. I've had new years that have felt very much like that. So if you're in a season of like, I'm just so pumped about 2024 and I'm excited about the new year and all of that, then that's amazing too. But it's just also okay to be in like whatever season you're in. I know for me, January is going to be a bit of like a head down month. Um, So I'm doing a little bit of traveling in the beginning of the month. And then I am really just going to have my head down to finish and write this book. Um, The book is due really soon. So I'm kind of like simultaneously flipping between writing new chapters and going back and editing chapters that my editor has returned back to me. So sometimes it's, it's like edits related to like simple stuff like word choice, or I don't know what this means, or like, this isn't going to make sense to people. And that is so helpful, by the way, because like, you know, when you're in your own head, and you know what you're talking about, or you know, your story or whatever, it's like, it's kind of easy to forget that everybody else doesn't know always what's going on in your head. So there's like those kinds of edits, but then there's like heavier edits that are, you know, like removing entire sections or telling me to condense stories or taking a section out of one chapter and being like, I think you should put this in the next chapter. And it's all pretty much optional, um, which was not something I I guess I knew or thought about going into the book writing process. But, you know, she makes suggestions to me and they're not requirements unless she tells me that they are. So there's a lot of like, obviously I want to take her direction on this because she's the expert um, and I want to write a really good book. And I want an outside set of eyes looking at my stuff so that I'm not just going off of like what makes sense in my head. Um, And at the same time, you have to balance that with like making sure things sound like you or are like true to your style or really, you know, like fit the vision of what you thought your book or whatever was going to look like. So it's a super interesting balance. I, I obviously don't know how to navigate it yet because I'm just going through it for the first time. But yeah, it's really, it's really interesting writing the book because I'm you know, balancing those edits and then the new writing. And it's kind of like two completely different tasks. 
So at least for me, the way that I've been navigating this is like, you know how you're just in different moods to do different things. And so when I'm feeling much more like energetic and creative, I try to write. And then when I'm a little bit burnt out on writing, or I'm just like, I have nothing else to say. I go back and I edit because a lot of that is just like moving things around or I've already done the writing, but I'm just making it better. So that's really what I'm doing right now. It's what I'm going to be doing for all of January, probably all of February. Then I'm going to have a lot of like copy edits back and forth. So this has been quite the ride writing my own book. I can't, I just, I can't believe, I think going into this year, I'm just like, I can't believe this is the year this is coming out. That's, that's really wild. And I'm really excited to start being able to like share about it and inviting people to order it and all that good stuff. So that's what I've got on my mind for 2024. So without further ado, let's get into talking about this new law, this new reporting requirement, the BOI, the the beneficial ownership information reporting requirement. So there's a new law, in case you haven't heard, that is just coming out. It's effective today. So January 1st, 2024, it's effective. We're pretty much all required to comply if we have a business. So if you've taken basically any steps, and I'm going to use a lot of like non-legal, non-lawyery sounding language in this episode because the whole point is just to break it down in plain English. So pretty much anybody who has taken any step to like start a business, like you've formed a business, you've registered a business, you've applied for a business, like that kind of thing, that requires you to fill out this form on a federal government website stating who owns your company, presumably you. Most of my listeners are, you know, sole owners of their own companies. But obviously, if you had a partner, a business partner, somebody else owned the business with you, you'd have to report their information as well. Pretty much the gist of this law, this requirement, is that the government wanted to increase transparency around who owns what company so that people are able to go online and figure out who owns a company. Now, of course, if I can put my like cynical lawyer hat on for a second, I think it's kind of funny that this law came out with the aim of increasing transparency. And a lot of the talk around it was around like big tech and and like financial stuff like banks and financial firms and, you know, privacy and blah, 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 all these kinds of things. And then it's like if you look at the list of exemptions, who's exempted from having to file this and having to report their information a lot of the people, a lot of the companies that this was like alleged to be created for were then excluded. Um, And I just always find it funny that like small business owners end up getting squeezed by these like big, these big requirements. It's just, it's really, really frustrating. I see it all the time where, you know, I'm dealing with small business owners who are like, wait, so I have to go through all of this or I have to pay this extra like fee or this extra tax. And it's like, that thing was created for big businesses, but yet we're all now being it's all being applied to us. Just like there are a lot of um, independent contractor laws like that have rolled out around the country, thanks to companies like Uber and stuff, where they have everybody working as a contractor, but they were doing certain things that were treating them like employees or not paying them right or whatever. So they make these really, really strict laws about independent contractors. And it ends up really impacting people like us because now people, some of my customers in certain states can't hire people as contractors because they're classified as employees, but they can't afford to. And that's really not what the law was meant to do. So just as like a, I just wanted to give that as like a quick aside event session, because I know like I, I sent to my email list a couple of weeks ago, my free BOI guide that you can get down in my show notes. And you know, a lot of people wrote back and were like, thank you so much. I'm really appreciative. And I'm also really frustrated that we have to do this. And yet the people who it was created for were excluded. And I didn't even tell people that in the email. I tried to keep it kind of positive, (laughs) but people know, and they, and they can see in like terms of what it says, like why the law was created. So it's, it's frustrating. And I just wanted to recognize that. Okay. So let's dive into some of the logistics about this new law, what it requires you to do and when you're required to do it. So first things first, the beneficial ownership information, BOI, B-O-I, reporting was a regulation that came out of a new law passed in the United States called the Corporate Transparency Act. This beneficial ownership information reporting requirement goes into effect today, January 1st, 2024. So like I said earlier, one of its requirements is that all registered or formed businesses, pretty much 99.9% of us, have to fill out a form on a government website stating who owns our businesses. 
The form itself is going to be free. The government says on its website that you're not going to need a lawyer. You should not need a lawyer. Um, that you should not need CPA assistance or any basically any professional assistance. This should be something basic that you're able to complete. Now, why am I talking about this form? Like it's a hypothetical form. Well, because the government came up with this law and said that we have to all, you know, that it goes into effect on January 1. Luckily, they gave us a lot of time to comply, which I'll go over in a second. But they actually haven't rep- they haven't actually released the form yet. So as of the date I'm recording this in mid-December, we don't have access to the form. So I have to talk about the form in a very hypothetical way right now. Um, but they do say that once it comes out, you're going to see it's very easy. So I'm just going off of what they're saying because that's really all I can do. So what the law says is that all reporting companies are required to report this information. And they define reporting companies as two different categories of companies. The first is a corporation, a limited liability company, aka an LLC, or a company that was otherwise created in the United States by filing a document with the Secretary of State or any other similar office under the law of that state or of an Indian tribe. So basically what that means in English is that a reporting company, who is a company that's required to report, is a company that you've registered in the United States. That's how I would take that. So some of you might have uh, a sole proprietorship that you've registered, an LLC, a corporation, a partnership, whatever. If you've registered it, you count as a reporting company. The other kind, the other category and the other type of company that falls under a reporting company is a foreign company that was registered to do business in any U.S. state or Indian tribe by such following, f- uh, by such a filing. So... What that means is that if you live overseas, if you live in the UK, for example, but you registered your business here in the US, you registered as a business able to do business in the US, you're also required to register under BOI. There are 23 exceptions for who's um, able to or who's required to file this form. Nonprofits are one of them. Okay, so that's pretty much the only one that I can see really applying to many of my listeners because some of you have nonprofits. But I'm going to include, uh, I have included a link for you inside of my free Boyd, boy guide that lays out all the exemptions for you. So you're going to want to download that guide. It has a link to all the exemptions. I have a feeling they don't apply to you, but it could, like I said. So check the list. Okay, now how should you file your form and when can you file it? So the form is available, like I said, starting on January 1st. The link to um, get the form is inside of my free boy guide. And reporting will then start on January 1st because that's the first day that the form becomes available. But here's the gist of like when you need to register. I would say overall, it's pretty much not a rush. It's just something to be aware of and plan for because I have a feeling what's going to happen is everyone's going to delay and then everyone's going to rush to do it at the end. So here's the deal. If you created or registered your business prior to January 1st, 2024, you have until January 1st, 2025 to file your form. So again, basically, if you've registered your business before today, before January 1st of 2024, you have this entire calendar year to get this filing in. The issue starts to become that if you start to create or register a business from today, January 1st, 2024 onwards, the time period gets much shorter. So if you create or register your business on or after January 1st, 2024, you will have to report your boy form within 90 days after receiving notice that your business registration is effective. When we jump to next year, January 1st of 2025, and you start, if you register a business after that time, you then will only have 30 days to, re- to uh, register the boy form after receiving notice that your business registration is effective. The thing that applies to all of us, the tighter deadline that applies to all of us, is that once we submit our BOI report to the government, you will have to submit changes moving forward within 30 days of a change being made. So let's say that you go to submit your BOI form in February, and then in March, um, somebody approaches you to buy half of your business, or you decide to partner up with somebody, you would only have 30 days after making that change of them becoming a part owner, you would only have 30 days to update your BOI form. So it's something you have to factor in moving forward. Like I said, it's really no big deal. I'm not trying to make a big deal of it. It's just something that's legally required of you. It's a new law. So 
most of what I wanted to do today was just break it down to show you how easy and like not too big of a deal this is, but also to let you know that I have this free resource for you with my new boy federal requirement registration guide. Um, and I'm going to walk you through it. The other big thing and the other reason why you want to get this guide for me is because if you're not already on my email list, this guide will put you on my email list and only my email list is going to get a video walkthrough tutorial. So I'm going to send everybody on my email list a very quick tutorial about exactly how to fill this out, what the form looks like. I'm going to do it in real time as soon as it becomes available. So you want to make sure that you get on my email list. Just go click the link in my show notes below to get my, your free boy guide. So with that, I hope that this was helpful. I wanted to give you a little bit of a takeaway to-do list. When I did a recent survey of my email list about on your terms and people who listen to the podcast, I asked like, what are some things you would like me to do? And a few people mentioned, I would love if you rounded out episodes with some sort of task or to-do list. So my to-do list for you after listening to this episode is to number one, go get the free guide that I've prepared for you in the show notes because it has everything in it that you need. Two is find out what your date is that your form is due based on what I tell you in the guide and set a reminder today on your calendar or in your Asana board or whatever, wherever you keep that kind of stuff, set a reminder for yourself. Obviously, once you set the reminder for yourself to do it, review the form, fill it out and submit it. That's it. Those are the three things I want you to do. So I hope that this episode was helpful. I can't wait to chat with you next week. We got a big episode coming next week. It's part one of a four-part series all about how to kickstart your business in 2024. Whether you've already started your business um, or not, this, this four-part series is going to walk you through how to seriously, epically scale your business in 2024. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'll see you next Monday with part one of that new series. Thanks so much for listening to the On Your Terms podcast. Make sure to follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. You can also check out all of our podcast episodes, show notes, links, and more at samvanderreelen.com slash podcast. You can learn more about legally protecting your business and take my free legal workshop, Five Steps to Legally Protect and Grow Your Online Business at samvanderreelen.com. And to stay connected and follow along, follow me on Instagram at samvanderreelen and send me a DM to say hi. Just remember that although I am a attorney, I am not your attorney and I am not offering you legal advice in today's episode. This episode and all of my episodes are informational and educational only. It is not a substitute for seeking out your own advice from your own lawyer. And please keep in mind that I can't offer you legal advice. I don't ever offer any legal services, but I think I offer some pretty good information.